When it comes to SSDs, people are usually talking about those big brands like uh, Samsung, Western Digital, Crucial, or Kingston. But there are so many other brands on the market, and then some of those lesser known ones very often make really interesting SSDs as well. For example, these two drives right here, the Transcend 250H and 250S, are currently the cheapest 4TB Gen 4 NVMe SSDs that use TLC memory that I can buy here in the Netherlands. So let's check them out. Transcend itself isn't exactly a new nor a small brand. They've been around since the 80s and they make a lot of different storage products from uh, SSDs and SD cards all the way up to system memory. And like most brands, they don't actually manufacture each component of the SSD. So it kind of comes down to what components they decided to buy and then combine. The 250H and the 250S are the same drive with only one difference. The H model has a heatsink, while the S model has a very thin metal layer instead, which means that it will nicely fit under motherboard heatsinks and in laptops. They use the Silicon Motion SM2264 controller, which is the latest high-end controller that a Silicon Motion makes. The memory itself comes from Western Digital and it is their 112 layer BICS5 3D NAND. It is the same memory they use for the SN850X, for example, uh, which is one of the best SSDs I've tested so far. They come with 2GB of DRAM cache, a 780 terabyte written rating per terabyte of storage, which is actually more than the Samsung 990 Pro offers, and they come with a 5-year long warranty. So on paper, Transcend looks really good. You can buy these in 1, 2 or 4 terabyte capacities, and I have the 4 terabyte version right here. And if you're very curious about how much or actually how little the capacity will impact the performance of an SSD, I recently posted a video on that, so do check it out. Anyway, I am going to begin with the PC Mark 10 Quick Benchmark, and this is actually a collection of little tests that replicate all those light things we do with our PCs every single day. Uh, looking at photos, for example, uh, opening various documents, and so on. And this is a great benchmark for anyone that wants to add some extra storage to their system for these simple little tasks. And Transcend is off to a very decent start here. Both drives are close to the Crucial P5 Plus, which is another SSD that offers a lot of performance for a decent price. And they are ahead of other value-focused drives like the P3 Plus, for example. But they're also a little bit behind high-end drives like the KC3000 and the SN850X. And the 990 Pro is kinda in a class of its own, but it is also a lot more expensive than other drives. The full PC Mark 10 suite is supposed to replicate a more consistent, more intense, and more serious use of your drive. And this is a very useful benchmark for anyone that is looking for a new main drive or for anyone that needs to run some applications that can be very heavy on the SSD, like editing videos, for example. And here, they're holding on to that similar position. They're a bit ahead of actual budget drives, as well as the 980 Pro. They are close to the P5 Plus, but still a little bit behind the top performers. And if we look at the latency result, we get the same image, pretty much. Now, the PCMark consistency test is not really relevant for most people, uh, but it is always very interesting to see how a drive behaves under uh, that extreme multi-hour workload that just stresses the drive drive to its very limits. And if we look at the graph, we can see that they are not a top tier option like the 990 Pro, but they actually held up pretty well. Cheaper SSDs often completely tank in this situation, and you can see the Samsung 980 and the Kingston NV2 dropping below SATA SSD performance, and the Crucial P3 Plus performing barely above that. So I would say this score is completely fine, and I would be completely comfortable recommending this drive even for a pretty heavy workstation setup. Gaming is another reason why you might want to buy a large, affordable SSD. And this 3D Mark storage test is actually a combination of benchmarks that include a lot of gaming-related tasks, like uh, loading games, uh, installing games, uh, recording games, saving games, and moving game folders around. Both drives are now ahead of the P5 Plus and really close to the MP600 Pro LPX from Corsair and the 990 Pro. And they are again ahead of other cheaper drives like the P3 
plus. If we just look at the gaming results that I personally find most important, which is um, loading times, installation times, and update times, it all looks pretty similar. They score around 80% of the performance of the fastest drive I've tested so far, which is the WD SN850X. Sequential read and write performance doesn't really represent a proper real-life use as well as the PC Mark and the 3D Mark tests, but it is always worth checking if a drive meets the speed that they claim in their spec sheet. In sequential reads, it averages at 6800 megabytes per second, which technically puts them in second place and in line with other top-tier Gen 4 drives. It is well above Sony's recommended spec for the PS5, so combined with the earlier mentioned performance, this drive should be great for your PlayStation 5. Sequential writes came in at around 6200 megabytes per second. Uh, a few drives are faster, but honestly, between all those drives at the top, the differences are actually irrelevant. Now, high-end SSDs usually get very hot, and these two are no exception here, but you need to really go out of your way for thermals to become an actual problem. If you don't give them any airflow at all, uh, you can get the version with the heatsink to hit around 85 degrees Celsius after a very long stress test, and you really need to stress it for a very long time to reach that, and even then, a little bit of airflow from your case will be enough to get rid of that heat. Even the version without a heatsink will generally be completely fine, as long as there is a little bit of airflow. Uh, for example, these are the results of the Extreme 3D Mark consistency test with and without a heatsink, but with a low RPM fan nearby. Uh, that is a 3% of a difference after hours of non-stop testing. So you shouldn't worry about it too much and just buy whichever version fits you best. If your motherboard has a heatsink, a Grab D250S, and if your motherboard doesn't have a heatsink, or you're buying this for the PlayStation 5, uh, just grab the heat synced one instead. That being said, you should always keep an eye out for the price difference because it is never worth paying a lot more for a pre-installed heatsink. So if the 250H is a lot more expensive in your region, you can just add a third-party heatsink for about $10 or 10 euros uh, that will do the job more than fine. As always, I will leave some recommendations in the description of this video. If I look at the prices here in the Netherlands, it is actually one of the cheapest 4TB options. Uh, the only cheaper 4 terabyte Gen 4 NVMe drive is the P3 Plus, but that drive is a QLC drive with consistently weaker performance. Uh, I would personally spend 30 euros more for these better performing TLC drives. The Kingston KC3000 costs another 55 euros, and the SN850X and most other 4 terabyte Gen 4 SSDs are over 100 euros more expensive, which I just find hard to justify. If I was buying a new 4 terabyte drive right now with these prices, I would actually grab this Transcend 250. Now, if I look at the 2 terabyte segment, it is a little bit harder to make a firm decision. It's not too bad if you compare it to the P3 Plus or the NV2, but if you just want a better product, the KC3000 costs the same, it is slightly faster and probably has the advantage of a more familiar name as well. And the one terabyte market is even more difficult. I would say the price is reasonable, but I do think it would be hard to compete in terms of popularity with the other drives on this list, like the P5 Plus, for example. If you're curious about US pricing, unfortunately, I simply don't know it yet. A Transcend is sold in the US, uh, at a lot of retailers actually, including Amazon, but I haven't seen a 250H or S listing just yet. But at the end of the day, it also doesn't really impact the conclusion. Transcend has shown us that they can make a fast, high-end Gen 4 drive that performs really well in just about everything, and that they can price it competitively, which is about as positive as any SSD conclusion can ever be. So if you're in the market for a new SSD, especially the high capacity one, and you find these for a very good price, they are definitely worth considering. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their brand new Vertex power supplies. These fully modular power supplies are extremely efficient and very quiet due to their fan design and their hybrid fan mode that stops the fans completely under 40% load. They come with a variety of connections for any kind of systems you have in mind, including the new 12 volt high power cable for the latest RTX graphics cards. And as a little bonus, you get a cozy 10 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. 
Now that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful enough. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this one, do consider clicking that subscribe button. Bye guys and see you in the next one.